You're in the Forum 24, and this presentation is uh, Becoming the Six Million Dollar Man, presented by Gunther Ullmann. Hey, good morning, everyone. So uh, I'm uh, Gunther Ullmann, and uh, just a quick uh, about me. Uh, I'm VP of Research at uh, Dumbala and Board of Advisors for IOActive. I've been uh, dealing with um, you know, IT security and penetration testing and red team and uh, understanding the bad guys and being able to replicate the bad guys for way too long. Uh, and uh, um, I'm going to be talking today really about uh, you know, the commercialization, if you like, of botnets, but more in particular, the, uh, the way that if you're building and running a botnet, how you actually make real money, real serious money. Yeah. But before I sort of like dive into you know, what I'm sort of going to cover, I thought that uh, you know, a disclaimer was probably uh, in order, and I found that the South Park disclaimer here, you know, that's uh, really what I'm going to cover is you know, really looking at what the bad guys tend to do, uh, and uh, more specifically the, the, the bad guys that actually know what they're doing uh, and intentionally choose this as a career path. Okay. And uh, this is based on uh, analysis uh, and uh, discussions and conversations and observations of uh, uh, several dozen different uh, botnet operators. Uh, and I'll, I'll tend to use that, the term commercial botnet operators because this is their business. Okay. Now, you know, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to dive, you know, I'm going to give a bit of background about the, the, the business model, what sort of, hits, you know, what sort of sits behind there, uh, what are some of the thoughts and the way that people go about deciding that they're going into, uh, into botnets and botnet building, uh, and then really look at uh, uh, two or three key schemes that are being used for actually monetizing uh, the bots uh, and being able to extract maximum value out of the, the botnets themselves. So, you know, what, are the, what, you know, what is the talk? You know, first of all, we're going to be really coming about understanding the profession, you know, demystifying the, uh, this, you know, this, uh, the sophistication of this particular type of threats, uh, examining the monetization models. But what this talk isn't about uh, intentionally uh, is it's not meant to be a how-to guide on how to build a better botnet, and it's not meant to be you know, a how-to guide on how to be a better you know, online cyber criminal. Let's get the ball rolling, I think, you know, so, so botnets really aren't as scary, difficult, or even illegal as many people think, okay? And, uh, you know, the, the botnets really have become, you know, just a tool for, uh, for actually launching attacks and actually making serious money. But you need to understand that the, you know, the, the botnets themselves, it's, it's not a case of, you know, Assembling all the little parts, a little bit of a Lego pile, uh, and then you know having a botnet. You know there is a bit of a, a skill and mastery in being able to take all those parts, all those components, and actually turn it into a work of art, if you like. Now, when I was looking at you know what the, the, the bad guys, the guys that are already getting involved in this, doing this commercially, uh, and uh, sort of tracking back and, and keeping up some of the conversations with them, you know what, what sort of you know drives them or what sort of drove them. Uh, and many of them are actually, uh, interesting enough, uh, have you know, attended Black Hat, attended some of the training courses and other things around the world, uh, and have chosen this as a profession. Uh, and many of them have picked uh, you know, uh, sunny, idyllic countries, uh, work from home, uh, and, uh, and really sort of build up their business. And so if you look at you know what their what their goals are, you know it's it really is you know build you know they have they have an objective of making as much money as possible and to retire in those countries in those areas uh, very well off. And so you end up you know, really looking at you know, how do you build up a, a business plan for for this? You know, and it's pretty simple. You know, you have to build a business plan for you building your business plan of botnets. You have to execute the business plan. Uh, it's pretty important that you actually avoid attention. Uh, for these types of botnets, uh, and you know, again, for your business plan, I want to retire early you know, launching these. But how much of this is actually criminal? And you know, I think a key part here is that which country you're in pretty much determines whether or not you know, what you're doing is illegal or not. So many countries around the world, you know, botnets uh, may or may not be illegal. In fact, most of the countries that I've been looking at, uh, actually owning or running a botnet is not illegal. 
you know, infecting and having uh, and uh, unauthorized access to a victim machine may be more illegal uh, than in some other countries, but not necessarily illegal in all countries. Um, much of the, the time when we have a look at uh, successful prosecutions against uh, botnet operators, it's not so much about uh, how big their botnet was or uh, the fact that they had you know, uh, unauthorized access to uh, into computers. Uh, most of the uh, prosecutions, the su successful prosecutions, actually focus on the uh, uh, financial fraud, the credit card fraud, and the other monetary transactions, because that, that legal and that, uh, that legislation is a lot easier to prosecute against. Now, when it comes to building botnets for fun and profits, you don't actually need to be a hardcore criminal. Uh, there are plenty of uh, tools, guides, how-tos, vendors, uh, and sponsors uh, for developing botnets. If you want to go and, and uh, learn about the latest kits, the latest ways of uh, uh, building uh, uh, scoring botnets uh, and uh, ensuring that uh, you're capable of uh, uh, defeating the, you know, the uh, host-based uh, defensive systems, um, try typing a few keywords into YouTube and you will find literally thousands and thousands of uh, professional operators uh, that will uh, provide a mentor-type system for you developing and building up your botnet. Uh, and they will also uh, show you their latest tools, which you can purchase for a nominal value of a few hundred dollars, uh, or maybe uh, you know, a rent-to-own where you can you know, borrow, some of their, uh, borrow some of their computer systems, uh, part of their botnets, uh, and grow that botnet, and you pass back you know, a percentage of your earnings. But a key thing really is, you know, this really is just a business like any other. Now, as a, a newbie botnet uh, operator or a botmaster, you know, there's a couple of you know, codes that you sort of want to try follow. So one, number one is you know, don't get caught, really obvious. But you need to take, you know, and looking, looking at the successful operators, that's, uh, that really starts from day one. You know, even when they're looking you know, on YouTube and looking for you know, advice on how to, still, you know, to find the right tools, where to build their botnets and grow these botnets, um, Extreme care is taken to make sure that none of that you know, very early on stage uh, reconnaissance can ever be you know, uh, tracked back to the actual individual themselves. Okay. And you know, from my side, when we're looking at uh, tracking the, the bad guys who are actually running these botnets, more often than not, the way that we actually identify them and track them back to who they physically are is mostly because of what happens and what they did in the first, you know, first few weeks of uh, their construction of their botnets and as they're learning how to build botnets. So any mistakes uh, and leaks at the beginning uh, are fatal uh, for the botnet operators. Okay. Another one for you know, speaking with these guys, a lot of them you know, do see it as purely as a business and they don't want to be in criminals. Okay. And so they, there is a, a code of ethics, a uh, very flexible code of ethics uh, in you know, professional botnet building. Um, and, and many of them, if I look at uh, what they want to do, they don't want to do criminal harm. So that tends to mean that they want to do, they don't be involved in wars or uh, any sort of uh, deeply political events. However, you know, given enough uh, money or influence, they are more than happy to uh, rent out their botnets to those particular organizations if necessary. Uh, they typically don't want to cause any type of deaths, uh, and uh, they generally don't want to get in bed with uh, organized crime. Uh, however, as they tend to uh, develop their, their botnets uh, after you know, a few months uh, or you know, uh, later stages of a year, uh, then they will be you know, more open to actually using uh, uh, organized crime as customers as they rent or borrow parts of their botnets. So key things to remember uh, when it comes to, to botnets. So uh, resilience is damned important. Okay, so uh, all these things about having command and control and having one server and serving up all the content and you know, taking back all the details and that uh, doesn't really exist anymore. Uh, apart from you know, the, the very newbie guides and uh, you know, you're doing your first proof of concept botnets, uh, botnets today you know, uh, in any construction are highly resilient to takedown. Okay. Botnets themselves are just the tool. Okay. Uh, compromising machines is one thing, installing a piece of malware, another thing. Uh, but frankly, if you want to actually you know, do anything and actually make any uh, real money, then the botnet itself is just the tool. You know, the tools can become very advanced, uh, but it's all an aid to actually monetizing uh, access to those systems. Of course, the last thing, of course, is you want to be rich, but you know, as part of being rich, you want to retire rich and not in jail. So when it comes to you know, connecting to command and control, um, 
generally there is a quite a big separation between work and pleasure. Uh, so many of the times when we're looking at these guys, they'll have uh, entirely separate systems, you know, uh, typically laptops, dedicated laptops that they've built just for uh, accessing the command and control. Okay. A key feature of that and uh, the rigor that they go about uh, building their business is you know, untraceability. So a lot of times uh, you'll see you know, uh, standard tool sets of you know, changing the MAC address regularly, uh, using different web browsers, uh, uh, you know, uh, separate base install machines so there's no uh, additional applications that can be traced back to the actual operator themselves. And of course encrypting all the command and control traffic. So this is the command and control traffic line between the operator uh, and the command and control servers. And generally most of that is now uh, asymmetric key encryption. Another part, you know, deniability is important. So open Wi-Fi is your friend when it comes to this, okay? Uh, and uh, there's plenty of guides and a lot of uh, mentorship focus on the fact that uh, where are the best Wi-Fi spots? Uh, in particular, which Wi-Fi spots do not have uh, uh, closed-circuit TV monitoring uh, of, uh, of uh, you know, people using their services? Another key one, uh, don't ever connect directly. Okay, and if you look at some of the uh, uh, prosecutions or attempted prosecutions earlier this year on the things like the Mariposa botnet groups and that, uh, the, all the tracking back and, and the, uh, attribution to, to the operators has really been because they were uh, negligent once or twice despite trying to follow you know, their best, uh, the best rigor. Uh, they, they messed up once or twice and that's actually what led uh, to tracking them down. Another key one, a uh, key piece of advice, really has been hiding in the, in the masses. So academic networks, libraries, these types of uh, venues are you know, ideal spots for, for connecting. On the, the command and control side, you know, for, so free Wi-Fi access points are ideal. Uh, and uh, there's you know, uh, a lot of advice about which particular tools you can use for you know, automatically changing the MAC address, for example, of your, uh, of, your, of your computer system. So imagine that you've got a couple of laptops that are purely used for your connection to command and control, uh, and those laptops will be used for Wi-Fi, going to free Wi-Fi spots, uh, and you know, moving between the different sites, uh, and constantly changing the MAC address. Uh, so again, it can't be tracked back to the individual. Now the money framework is, is important as well. So you know, as you're building you know, your first stage botnets and really you know, growing those botnets into you know, full-fledged businesses, a difficult part is actually dealing with the seed money. Okay? So uh, once you have a particular botnet running, then it becomes a lot, more, a lot easier and a lot more efficient to, to do things, to acquire services uh, and to, uh, to, to effectively monetize the botnet a lot faster. However, you need a certain degree of seed money. Okay? And <coughs> So things like uh, rebate cards uh, and rebate systems are perfect. Uh, however, they become a little bit harder to actually cash in online. So credit card rebate cards uh, and gift cards uh, tend to be the preferred way of actually getting that initial seed funding for your organization. Uh, and uh, it's not typically a theft. Uh, it's not, you know, that seed money isn't typically done through a, a theft or fraud to begin with. Uh, payment for initial services, so you know, looking at services for hosting your DNS, hosting your uh, web services, uh, your anonymization services and things like that, uh, proxies uh, and, uh, and hosting. Uh, you know, that's where you're going to you know, assume, uh, use most of your, your seed money there. Uh, the toolkits themselves, uh, if you're uh, okay with a little bit of piracy, then frankly you can download many of the kits uh, today for free. Uh, however, um, uh, I think when I look at a lot of the, the operators that are actually developing the, the kits themselves, so the d uh, DIY kits for uh, building botnets, managing botnets, uh, and uh, infecting machines, uh, many of them actually provide these uh, light versions uh, for free uh, or you know, distribute them freely uh, with the, the general uh, hope that people will upgrade and pay for the fully fledged version. So, you know, getting access to um, you know, gift cards, in particular, uh, the credit cards that can be used online and untraceable are very, very easy. Of course, you know, a quick search online will reveal plenty of uh, sites from all the major uh, credit card vendors and the banks themselves. Uh, and, you know, you can generate your gift card uh, and it can be sent to your address. You do not need to specify that it's in your home address. Uh, and many of these uh, uh, you know, these types of portals will actually allow you to pay via 
uh, PayPal or other types of, you know, or Western Union type transactions. So there is a, uh, 